it is. All right, welcome. Uh, we have some great guests on today. Obviously, um, I, I've kind of been blown away by just what I've learned so far, so I can't wait to share with you what's happening in San Diego that you're probably not aware of. Welcoming back to the set, Derek Barksdale is here. How are you doing, LT? I am doing outstanding, as always. Great always to see you, Always a pleasure man. to be here. Oh, man, it's so great to have you here today. And this, uh, you brought a couple of really amazing guests today. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell us, how did you get connected, and, and how did this come together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you know, my daughter played volleyball, um, and uh, she, after college, ended up looking at a way to give back to the community and give back through volleyball because that was something that she knew. And so she ended up um, coming across uh, Jesse here, who is with Exodus uh, Volleyball Club. And uh, he approached her about you know helping with some coaching and things of that nature. And she sat down with him and really saw that he was more than just a club coach for volleyball. He was really a person who wanted to give back to the community on this grand scale. And um, she told me about him, and then she told me about how they were putting together a program that was going to help some homeless children go across sea to Asia and really get an understanding for how life is outside of the U.S. And I thought that was great because, you know, Military Mutual, we're always looking out for the homeless. We're always looking out for veterans that, you know, just need a little helping hand and uh, ended up where what they're doing is actually helping out the homeless and our veteran community as well in so many different ways. And so as I found out a little bit more about it, I said, man, we have to highlight this because unfortunately in homelessness situations, the fact is people just aren't aware of what is out there and what the programs are. So I spoke with Jesse and I said, man, we got to get you on the show. I want to talk about how we can impact so many lives. And as I start finding out even more as we were sitting down with you, Man, it's just really amazing how people can come together and do some amazing things. So yeah, it's it's one of those things that you um, you kind of know is there, but you don't really know the extent. Exactly. We're sort of removed from that. Yeah. You know, most people are just through their normal everyday life, just not not really not really thinking about it. it just doesn't really come to mind, which is why we're here today. We want to shed some light on it. So, uh, Chewy Nunez is here. Gentlemen, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? Um, now you, what is your position? With the I'm the director of athletics at okay. the Monarch School. At the Monarch School. Yes. Um, and Jesse Pena, you are, what's um, your position with uh, Exodus? Director at Exodus Volleyball Club. Exodus Volleyball Club, okay. And how are you guys connected? Uh, I met Jesse, uh, he was serving uh, in an, as an athletic director at a, a sister school, a neighboring school. And we just connected, he told me about Exodus and he told me about just the possibilities that uh, we could have through the club level. Um, we offer so many opportunities at, at Monarch but the, the refinement, the technical refinement that a club brings uh, would just take our girls to the next level. Uh, we connected and uh, he was able to bring his club over to Monarch. Uh, we, we're one of the bases for uh, Exodus there for our teams and um, it's grown from just a few interests, a few interested young ladies. So yesterday I believe he had 30 uh, elementary and middle school uh, girls doing club volleyball off season, uh, getting their work in. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome yeah. because here's, here's what's interesting that you probably don't know about Monarch. Yeah. So tell us what is unique about Monarch's a public school. Yeah, Monarch's a public school. We're K through uh, 12, and we're the only school that's kind of the country. All of our students are impacted by homelessness. So uh, we have an, an image, we have an idea, uh, maybe a picture that pops into mind when you hear the word homeless, um, and Monarch challenges that because it, it m homelessness comes in many shapes, sizes, and many scenarios, and uh, our students are, are face some very difficult circumstances. Uh, but they're overcome. Um, our graduation rate is through the roof. Our attendance rate is through the roof. And uh, these are students who live in uh, in shelters and motels. Some stay in their cars. Some stay are in safe lots. Some are in the tent cities that have popped up. Uh, some are doubled or tripled up, non-equitable rent situation uh, or living arrangement. Uh, so uh, we exist with community help. So again, we're 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 completely uh, public, but uh, we have a nonprofit attached to us, the Monarch School Project, uh, that provides wraparound services, uh, different counseling, and different. Uh, college and career readiness, um, and just different uh, auxiliary services that are needed to holistically reach uh, individuals uh, caught in and facing these uh, these temporary situations. Yeah, and sometimes those situations, I mean, like you said, many different shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. But um, what can sort of get lost in that is an education. You know, yes. a lot of times, if someone is in a situation like that, mm -hmm. um, they may, you know, the education may take a back seat. Mm -hmm. Or it may become something that's like, well, we, yes. we don't have time to deal with that, or we can't, you can't participate right. in that because there's things that cost money, or whatever it may be. Right. Um, and that's something that you guys are solving for. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you know, and I don't mean to, uh, you know, to tug at your heartstrings or to, you know, take you places that, that are uncomfortable, but, you know, if, if you were staying in a car 
you know, you couldn't care less what the War of 1812 meant when you get to school mm -hmm. or what an algorithm means. And with a lot of our students, you know, they, they have a lot of gaps in education. And one of my basketball players, um, his GPA was, he was never eligible to play at the previous schools he'd been in. Um, he had a .25 GPA at one, uh, close to a one at another. And he was above 2.0 for us. Uh, we met him where he was as an individual and got him the tutoring, the support, the help. Um, and he was able to be one of our, uh, uh, our starting uh, all league players. Wow, that's amazing. So the, now the athletics are also something yes, that is probably a real bright spot yes. for kids who are going through something like that and who just kind of want to have a normal life, right? right? Like that's, you know, it's just, it's kind of like when you're, when you're sick and you're like, gosh, if I could just be normal, mm -hmm. that'd be so great. And, and I think that's probably what a lot of these kids are, are feeling like, man, I just, I just want to be normal. I just want to do normal stuff that normal kids do, you know? And it's, it's a lot of weight on them, isn't it? Well, athletics are, are unique in that Athletics presents an equal playing field that's not available anywhere else. Right? What happens within the court, uh, the, the basketball rim is the same size for everybody. The net's the same height. Ball's the same size for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so that presents something where, like, look, give us, these, give us this time, give us these moments, and we'll see uh, what we can do and how we can accomplish things. And my girls, uh, we're, we're only a four-year four program. Uh, we just uh, received CIF status four years ago. And my girls' basketball team, we've won three league championships in those four years. Wow. <laughs> so we, we've had some success. Um, we partnered up with Exodus because we're seeing that even though there is equal playing field, even though that the nets and the courts and all that are certain sizes, there are certain things where our students were, were, were lacking. And it had nothing to do with skill. It had nothing to do uh, with drive. It was just the extra support, the extra technique, the extra coaching. And so now with Exodus, we've seen and we're hoping to get this just this extra measure, this extra measure of, uh, what uh, club level athletics brings and uh, just the, 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 the openness that it'll bring and the access to, to other tournaments and higher level of play. That's amazing. Yeah, really, really cool of you to do that, obviously. Um, Derek and I are both volleyball dads. All right. So we, I mean, like I have hashtag volleyball dad life probably a hundred times. Do we need to know. sit between you guys? In my, in my social media <laughs> career. Right. Coast and wave. Oh. No, we, 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 but we're still cool. We, yeah, no, we, it's, it's all good. It's kind of like, you know, it's Android, Apple. It's one of those things. Yeah. Apple's um, always better. <laughs> I actually agree with him on that. <laughs> <laughs> Call like Grant. We'll go from there. Yeah. Sure. But I, I can tell you this, you know, and, and, you know, volleyball and sports just in general, really, really important. Really, really important, and I know the studies, and I, um, I did a little research to make sure that's still true before we did this, this segment, but it's a big deal for, for, for girls, for young girls especially, um, for confidence and for um, a, a number of different things um, I won't go into, but look it up, Google it if you don't believe me. Um, it is very, very important and good mm -hmm. for young girls to be involved in sports and to do mm -hmm. sports. Um, so the fact that you guys are are helping with that and trying to help them have success with that is even better, in my opinion. Um, and we're going to talk, a lot, I think, a lot about volleyball here. We're about to go that direction, <laughs> but I want to make sure that we, we mention the things that are really, really important today, which is to support the work that you guys are doing. So tell us, how can we support the Monarch School, the work that you're doing with, you know, every single one of your students is impacted by homelessness, which yes. means it's a very challenging situation, more challenging than the normal school setting which is already extremely challenging, as we know. Right. How can people support that, as I believe everyone should, and I know I will? Hey, multiple ways to support. You can visit us at uh, monarchschools.org, plural, monarchschools.org. Uh, multiple ways to volunteer, to donate. Uh, we are a public school, but we depend on community contributions. Uh, we have something really cool at Monarch called the Butterfly Boutique, where mm -hmm. kids go and have a quote-unquote shopping day, and they get uh, the, the essential goods that they need, uh, toiletries and other items, but there's also I mean, anything from jackets to sneakers and, you know, anything that you can donate that's new, lightly worn, it, it goes to, to great use. Uh, we have, on April 26th, we have a, uh, a big fundraiser event coming up at, at Monarch. Um, you can find uh, information at uh, monarchschools.org uh, for uh, ticket prices and how you can help and how you can donate. And we'll post those links um, yes. in, in this uh, post in the comments and they'll be above after we're live. We are live right now, so if you want to say hi, feel free to do so. <laughs> it is, it's live on Facebook, baby. Uh, if you want to say hi, if you have experience, if you know any of these guys, um, say what's up. Uh, so we'll post those links. Thank you. So they will be in there um, once this, the segment is over. If you uh, want to contribute, if you want to check it out, I think it would be great for everyone to just 
to just help out a little bit, whatever it may be, whatever, whatever you have the capacity for, would be really greatly appreciated for a number of different reasons. And obviously this is something that is huge for a community to be able to have this yes. option and this opportunity. So uh, please help, please share this video and please help us um, support this great endeavor. Um, from, from a volleyball standpoint, so here's, here's what I understand is, is happening, right? You're coming in to help coach, yes. is that right? To provide sort of a higher level coaching opportunity because in volleyball, there's the school teams Yes. And then there's the club teams. Now, I don't know how it is over in your neck of the woods, mm -hmm. but in, in our neck of the woods, um, no one wants to play for their school. Mm. Everyone just wants to play for the club because it's kind of hard to do both. Mm. And usually the club teams are much better, higher level. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so most of the girls who are going into middle school, about my, my, about my daughter's age, they don't even want to play for the school. They want to just play for the club. And, and obviously because it's, it's a higher level and so they want to play, if they're going to pick one, they want to pick the highest level. Um, so what you're doing is you're saying, hey, let's let's bring some of that to Monarch School. Is that right? Yeah. So the idea is equity. You know, providing them a playing field where we meet them with what they need. You know, and what we've been doing, we've already had a team from Monarch compete at San Diego Volleyball Club and fully integrate, win some games, win some matches. Right. Um, and then this is the first season we'll be fully integrating two girls to actually join one of our travel teams. Mm -hmm. So one girl's going to a 16s team, and they'll be competing at the West Coast Championships in Vegas. And the other one will be going into our 17s team, and she'll compete in uh, Anaheim. So the purpose, the long-term goal, is to create a full team with Monarch students that can do the entire travel season in Anaheim through SCBA, through AAU, and be exposed to those college scouts, those college recruiters. Um, and what we use for foundation is um, the statistics, you know, CEOs, CFOs, um, a huge percentage of them were college athletes or high school athletes and the correlation between sports and success you can't beat. Okay. Yeah. Um, Especially volleyball. Yeah. Let's talk about this game because <laughs> this game, <laughs> it's a crazy game. There's a lot of moving yeah. parts, right? There's a lot of things to remember. There's systems, there's rotations. I still can't keep track of the rotations. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there's subbing, mm -hmm. there's limited amounts of that. There's obviously timeouts. Um, there's different plays, there's different situations, people have to cover different things, the setter's in the front row, she's in the back row, uh, you know, there's, there's so much to it. And going and watching a live volleyball match is really, really amazing, but it's a hard game to learn. And, you know, my daughter's only 11, so I've, I've watched her, she plays on the 13s team, but she's only 11 years old, so I've watched her learn with these girls the game, and they're just to the point where they're really playing the game. You know, mm -hmm. blocking is happening, girls are hitting the ball straight down, they're running slides and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's real volleyball now, you know, like it, before it was just kind of like, all right, can we get it three <laughs> over? All right, sweet. You know, hopefully they won't get it back. Um, we're past that. So, you know, the game, the game is intense and there's a lot to it. And I do want to tell you this too, Jesse, um, if you ever have a player um, with the Monarch School who needs to be sponsored to be involved or whatever like that, please call me. If you need a sponsorship for a Thank player you. who, you know, has the potential and, you know, it's, 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 it's needed, just call me. Okay, um, so <clears throat> to have the opportunity to learn that stuff, yeah. you know, and, to, and to, to get involved with it, it's intense. It is a lot of fun. I mean, it is really, really fun. I mean, you've been to more volleyball dad games than <laughs> I have. I had my fair share. I've spent some gym time, so to speak. And, uh, you probably got a couple thousand hours now at gym Easily, time. very easily. <laughs> and it's loud. I learned to go in with my headphones on now, you know, just kind of keep it a little bit. And I'm much calmer now. I mean, Are my you? first couple years, I was I'm the not dad that yet. was going back and forth like, oh, man. And now I just kind of relax and so forth. But, you know, there's so many tangible items to business and team sports. I know a CEO who will not hire anyone who's never participated in a team sport. He literally will ask them, hey, did you ever play any sports when you were in high school or school? And if they say, oh, no, I never did that. And he's like, oh, okay, great. Well, I'm going to have my HR person come in here and talk to you and everything, but it was great meeting you. And he's like, not a fit. And he would move on. Now, is that unfair or not? I don't know. The thing is, is a lot of people learn um, so many different skills in the sport of volleyball, basketball, whatever it may be, if it's a team sport, because you have to come together collectively. It can't be all about you. And there's rules to the game that you have to abide by. And those are the rules that we're talking about that sometimes they don't go your way. And you're like, no way, that was out. But really, hey, you got to get past it and move on. And so it really helps people in so many different ways. So I'm so thankful for coaches, you know, like Jesse and, you know, Chewy just being involved in the community in that aspect. And when you look at the homeless piece to it, it's just like a marriage made in heaven because 
There's a lot of stories out there of people who were homeless, who all they really needed was the chance, you know, all they needed was the opportunity, all they needed was that sponsorship. And, and thank you, Derek, for, you know, just saying, hey, if you do need someone who needs sponsorship, hey, we're here for you. And, uh, you know, not Thanks only that. Derek, Military Mutual, um, and you. we know hundreds of other people that are out there that would love to probably participate towards 100%. this. hundred percent. Well. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And thanks for making that point. And by the way, to all the volleyball referees out there, <laughs> the SCBA, <laughs> you know, the 13s game, you don't have to call it like the AVP with the double contacts, okay? I mean, seriously, every set isn't perfect, okay? Calm down, man. Calm I'm down. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> But you're right, that's where, that's where I was headed, yeah. was that, you know, because it's such a complex game, mm -hmm. the teamwork elements, you know, basketball, for example, you know, there's, a, there's, you know, there's always the Carmelo Anthony's, right? Mm -hmm. There's always the guy who's Thank like, it's just that. me, you know, you guys get out of my way. And, you know, you cannot do that in volleyball. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a, a responsibility, you know, and if the ball lands on the court right here, that's your part of the court, you know, mm -hmm. you need to be there. And so the teamwork element is, uh, is you know, the camaraderie mm -hmm. of a, a volleyball team is incredible. I mean, I've just, I've watched these girls, you know, grow up with this game and see how close they are and how, how much they're able to, to communicate with, with very little uh, words or even sounds. They just, mm -hmm. a look even, a look, I know, she's, it's a three. You know, like, it's just, just it's wild. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that skill set is something that is really hard to teach any other way. How do you teach teamwork? You know, how do you teach responsibility like that? Well, without one sports. Of, and I'm a little biased with in regards to the club and and uh, being a CIF athletic director. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm all about no, it's, it's your school. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> this is home so court, and it's who we are. But you know, I see the necessity of having club involvement, um, and so my my job is to to really make the the, the marriage work and. And, and, and let the students know, look, you, we're, we're part of the school team and, you know, within the rules and within, you know, when you can compete and when you can uh, not compete. But a big part of what, what we do is let them know, look, it's, it's, you're part of a whole here. And this is just more about your needs, your necessities on the court uh, and, and really getting that, that teamwork element uh, in. And I think people see what, uh, and the students see um, what happens when they work as a whole, when they work as a unit, when they work together, uh, when they, it stops, you know, blaming and, and you start being a cohesive unit mm. um, and that, that happens on the court it happens through a lot of sometimes it happens you have to reflect and see okay what happened well we were individuals uh, we were doing our own thing yeah. um, and at the end so okay, well let's this is why and it's for coaches okay this is why let's try the way that we practice let's try to work as a unit as, as a whole and you know that's that's where we see that uh, that uh, that smoothness come in it has to happen that way you run a big organization mm -hmm. LT mm -hmm. I mean if people aren't doing, their, and you were in the United States Navy for 20 plus years. The largest years. organization. <laughs> <laughs> the largest organization. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if people aren't doing their jobs in any of those situations. Bad things can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the ultimate is in the military, people can ultimately die. Um, you know, in sports, you get to play another play or you just take the loss mm -hmm. and you move on. But, you know, I think that all translates and is very important for the most part. One thing I do think that's really credible also, and, and I do agree also with the fact that, you know, high school, there's a, it's a different level because mm -hmm. you have your friends there from yeah. school, you're playing with your friends on the team and so forth. And when you win, it seems like it's crazy. When girls win on the high school level, yeah. it seems like a different level of winning, you know? When it's on club, they're like, yeah, we won. We were supposed to win, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then they kind of move on, but it's just really <laughs> different there. So, you know, getting back to, you know, the translation between business and, you know, and sports, I think it's so important, you know, for at least to get exposed to different things that are there. And, you know, the exposure that you're allowing is great. And speaking of exposure, one thing I definitely want to talk about is this upcoming trip that they have that they've planned that'll take some girls um, to play volleyball over in Asia. Yeah, so what, what is that, Jeff? Yeah. So we received a, a grant from the National Belief Center um, through the San Diego Diplomacy Council. And this grant allows us to take a group of 10 girls um, and take them overseas to Asia. And we're putting on clinics for small villages over there that haven't seen volleyball yet. So volleyball hasn't reached these parts of the world. That's unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. a num volleyball is the number two sport in the world, <laughs> right after soccer. And, and we're heading to these villages. We're going on a 15-day trip, um, Hanoi, Vietnam, and Luang Prabang, Laos. And we're putting on clinics. I, th I believe the number is about 100, 100 kids yes. from, from Asia. And, um, and then in November, 
about 20 of them come over here. And we have programming at USD for them. Um, we'll have some tournaments. I'm hoping to communicate with some of these local clubs and sort of get them involved into a tournament. So it's a complete sharing of culture um, and a complete um, integration of, of both American and, and Asian. I don't think people realize how big volleyball is yeah. across <laughs> the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think people understand. <laughs> yeah, no. um, in Europe, for example, um, once you get to be the 13-year-old um, level, mm -hmm. the players get paid to play. Mm. Wow. Yeah. We're so in the wrong area. Yeah. It's just. It's <laughs> just like. <laughs> no. It's, it's seriously one of the one of the one of Maya's teammates. Um, her mother is from Germany, and they're moving back to Italy next year and she's already got it and she's now she's like six five sure Dude, she's taller than me yeah she's yeah. 13. Wow. um but she, you know she's already got a deal with yeah. a volleyball club Jeez. now they don't get paid like they're not getting rich yeah but it's uh, that's how popular it is it's mm -hmm. so popular that the financial script is flipped yeah over there and that's one of the things that's difficult here um, or just for any sport not just volleyball but just for any sport because because club is the way to go because that's where the highest level is it's more expensive a lot of people can't participate in it or can't afford yeah. it um, and that's just in general, not to mention like um, the kids at the Monarch School who have been impacted by homelessness. There, there's <coughs> obviously, you know, I mean, just to have the chance to be able to get this, you know, in their life, it could make a huge, and I know you guys are going to do this for a long time, and I know you're going to have so many stories to tell us, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, um, about people who have, you know, whose lives were changed 100% by what you're doing. So it's just truly amazing stuff. and. I just wanted to, uh, Chewy, I want to give you a, um, another chance to talk about um, the gala that you have coming up, right? Yes. Trevor Hoffman? Yes, he will be the chair. Hall of yes, Famer yes, yeah. Trevor Hoffman. <laughs> yes, sir. Recently inducted to the Hall of no, Fame. 51 himself. Padres <laughs> legendary closer, Hell's Bells. I live downtown, and the bells would go off, and I'm like, oh, Padres must be up. <laughs> Trevor's, Trevor's coming in. Trevor's coming in. Uh, and I'd turn it on, and i watch him strike guys out. So um, that's really, really cool. But tell us the details on the gala. Yeah, so it's, it's April 26th. It's a Thursday. Uh, it's there at Monarch School. Um, you can go on monarchschools.org, and you can uh, see, uh, purchase uh, tickets. Um, and and go from there. And if for whatever reason the um, it's a limited amount of tickets, uh, but we can there's ways that you can donate, ways that you can help, and uh, so many uh, multiple ways that you can be involved and that you can help us uh, meet the mission because it is community minded, um, and it is you know the, the most recent statistic from the San Diego County Office of Education is there's about 20,000 homeless students in San Diego County, in San Diego County alone. Wow. So the need is 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 heavy, um, and we see quite a bit of students. Uh, at, at Monarch, we're not reaching um, the entire uh, number, but the ones we reach are, are getting a great education, uh, being prepared for college and be prepared for a career and, and beyond, be productive, uh, vital members of society. Yeah, that's incredible. Where is the school? Uh, Monarch School is located in East Village, East Village, Barrio Logan. Uh, so we are uh, close to Petco Park. Uh, we have every Tuesday, we have volunteer orientation every Tuesday at noon. Um, again, you can find the, the info, contact info, um, uh, set yourself up and, and hopefully you, if, if you're interested in being involved. I know the time is at a premium for many of us, but um, there's your, your monetary contribution is greatly appreciated. Hey, everybody, I think everybody really wants to help. Mm -hmm. You know, deep down, I think everybody, if you asked them, they'd be like, yeah, I'd love to help yes. somehow. So the great news is you can. There's a couple ways to do it. You can do it with your time. Yes. You can do it with your checkbook. Both are greatly appreciated, right? Yes. You don't have the time. You're probably doing okay, right? If you're really so busy that you don't have the time, you're probably doing okay. You can probably write a $50 check, a $100 check, or something like that, or PayPal, or whatever. Um, if, if you can't do that, if that's just not possible for you, then you probably have some time that you can put. So the good news is, no matter what the situation, if you really want to help, you can. This is a great, great cause. Um, really cool stuff that you guys are doing. Chewy, it's really nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too, Derek. Thank you for the Thank work. You for Incredible everyone. stuff, Jesse. One thing nice if I could well. bring up, though, yeah, because please. our organization is matching for any of our agents who want to contribute. I know that Jesse has uh, this trip that's scheduled, mm -hmm. and it's not free. It costs money, and I think Definitely. you need, what, $25,000? 25 would be the goal. And right now, how much are you at? Right We're now? almost at 9000 Okay. Um, and most of it came from one person. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You need those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that um, one of the links that we have? Yeah, it's a GoFundMe. 
with the GoFundMe backslash um, mm -hmm. adaptive sports for social change. Okay, so we have that link, we have the Gala link, um, and we have we'll have all these links posted. So right. don't worry, they'll be there when you go to look for them. Um, great stuff, LT. Thank you so much for coming on again. It's always man. an honor. Great once to again. see you, my friend. All right. Great stuff from Military Mutual and the Military Mutual Initiative. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.